Hey everybody, Erica here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you've been following me on Instagram for the past couple weeks, you know that friendship with God is kind of a recurring theme that's been going on in my life. And so whenever I think about friendship with God, I think about Luke 17, 11 through 19. So if you have a few minutes to spare, I'd love to read it with you and talk about it. Starting at verse 11. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. So in this story, we hear about the healing of the ten lepers. And in this time period, when you had leprosy, you were deemed unclean. Those who were unclean could not go to the city. They had to stand outside the city gates and yell, I'm unclean, I'm unclean, so that no one could contract their disease or become unclean themselves. And frankly, I can't imagine anything more humiliating. So it's no wonder that from people and from Jesus, these 10 lepers kept their distance. Have you ever kept your distance from Jesus? For some of us, like these lepers, it was not by choice, but because society told us that we needed to keep our distance from Jesus. Perhaps it's because of our religious background, our family, the way we were baptized, our theological beliefs. Or maybe it's because of who we love, our political affiliation, or things that we've done in our past that caused members of society to tell us that we are unfit to be near Jesus. For some of us, society hasn't told us that, but we've told ourselves that. We've told ourselves that we're too spiritually unclean, too stuck in the mire of sin or covered in shame, and we couldn't possibly be worthy of standing near Jesus, couldn't possibly look Jesus in the eyes, and we can only call out to Jesus from a distance. And for some of us, we kept our distance from Jesus because we've built a barrier between us and Jesus. You know, I was sitting at the mall a little while back and I was looking at this walk-up counter and I was trying to figure out like, how do the employees even get to work from behind the counter? Because there's no opening. And I started thinking about how the counter creates a barrier between the customer and the employee. And I realized that the barrier defines the relationship between the two people. That barrier with the walk-up counter and the cash register signals the relationship between the employee and customer is transactional rather than relational. And how often is that true with our relationship with Jesus? I mean, how often are our prayers more transactional than relational? Like asking for wishes from a genie. I know my prayers have been that way. Uh, when I first moved to Nashville, like I moved here to make it in the music business. And at the time I read this book about praying circles around your dreams. And so I took this very literally. Like I prayed and prayed and prayed that God would open doors for me at music companies. And I would literally walk around music company buildings in circles, praying for my big break. I treated God like my personal genie, wanting God to grant my wishes and make my dreams come true. And some of us have caught ourselves praying like this too. We've asked God for money. We've asked God for a job we really wanted. And of course we can ask God for things and we can ask God for the passions that are on our hearts. But the problem comes when our only form of communication with God is when we're asking for things. We know from the text that nine of these lepers only had transactional relations with Jesus. 
These 10 lepers called out to Jesus and asked for healing and they got it and went on their merry way, not even stopping to look back. Only one leper decided to have a relationship with Jesus that was more than this one transaction. The one leper who came back, the Samaritan, realized who Jesus was beyond what he could do for him. The foreigner of all people who probably didn't grow up with all the synagogue training that the other Jewish lepers had was able to realize a deep Christological claim that he was healed not by a human prophet or a magic healer or a teacher, but this Samaritan realized that he was healed by God and that Jesus was God. He didn't have the New Testament epistles like we do laying out theological claims that Jesus was fully human and fully divine. The Samaritan gained this wisdom through seeking a relationship with Jesus. You see, when we have a relationship with God that is more than transactional, we gain a wisdom that we don't expect. We have understanding that comes to us that there's no way we could have this understanding on our own. And it's only through time spent with God, a communion through relationship, that we gain deeper spiritual understanding about who God really is. And when we receive this deep understanding, when we behold the great presence of God and experience the power, the wisdom, and the love that he has for us, that God has for us, we can't help but be in awe. And the only appropriate response is prostrating ourselves like the Samaritan, laying ourselves flat on the ground at the feet of Jesus. And when you have this posture of awe, of humility and gratitude, when you truly understand who has healed you, who has made you clean, who has banished your outcast status and brought you into community as part of the body of Christ, that is when Jesus says, you have faith that can make you well. It's important here to understand that even though the other nine lepers were healed and made clean, Jesus never said that they were made well. When I was little, I asked for glasses for Christmas, even though I had 20-20 vision. I just thought they were the coolest thing. But the thing about glasses for those who need them is that, and I will soon, I'm sure, is that even though they fix your eyesight externally, your eyesight is still not fixed internally. Your eyesight might be corrected with these fixtures, but your eyesight is still not fully healed. And these lepers were healed on the outside. They were made clean and allowed back into the city, but these lepers were not made well. Only the leper who showed gratitude, who gained spiritual wisdom to understand who it was that healed him, who knew that there was nothing more important he needed to do than to lay at the feet of Jesus, is the one who was made well. So as you go about your week, when you cry out to God from a distance for whatever circumstances you find yourself in, remember that through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, you were made clean to stand in the presence of Jesus. There is no barrier. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, you can always be in relationship with the great healer. Gain wisdom and understanding to behold the awesome power of God and find great gratitude for the blessings that God has given you. And through your relationship with Jesus, you can be made well. Thank you.